Greetings, everyone. So, ready to play some more The Thing on PS2? Yeah, okay, let's, uh, let's get to it here. Did you just hear something? <laughs> Maybe it's The Thing. <laughs> okay, let's get it going. What the hell is that? I'm sorry, we won't be playing the thing right now. I must go and build my new computer. Greetings, everyone. Yes, this is uh, a little bit overdue. Uh, you may recall the uh, package opening video from a little while ago from Poshua92, longtime YouTube viewer who wanted to contribute something really useful other than the, you know, m most people just send me stuff that, you know, movies they want me to check out or that they think I might like for my collection, which is awesome, and I fully appreciate that. Uh, but Poshua wanted to do something a little bit different and send me something that uh, was more on the practical side of things. So basically, he sent me a huge pile of computer parts. And well, while it's not strictly Halloween related, I tried to make it sort of Halloween-y with the little intro there. Hope you liked it. Um, yeah, the main reason being I thought like, you know what, I really need to get this, this machine put together because given the sheer volume of videos I'm cranking out this Halloween, I could really use the extra processing power Plus, just having a second computer will help considerably. I can be filming on one, rendering on the other, you know? So it just makes sense to have it going. But there were a few parts that I needed to get. Um, I actually wanted to get some more RAM, um, but uh, and I actually was going to get the exact same type of RAM that Pasha was sent, uh, because they have it online at NCIX, reasonably priced. And uh, I thought, well, that'd be great. You know, just he sent me eight gigs, get another eight gigs, the exact same type, exact same speed, everything. Uh, it'll be beautiful. And uh, they had it on sale. And I was like, great, they have it on sale. Put it in the shopping cart and then realized it was on back order. So yeah, great, great sale price, but who knows when I'm gonna get it. So yeah, I thought about it and figured, you know what, let's not be greedy. Eight gigs is still two gigs more than my current machine has. So what the hell am I complaining about? Plus this is DDR3. The one in my current machine is DDR2. So way faster, way more efficient, just way more better. -er. All right, so let's give a quick rundown on what, uh, what parts we have. I guess this uh, case is kind of Halloween-y because of course it's got the, uh, the orange and black motif. We'll, we'll just pretend this is this is Halloween. Yes. Okay. Um, so what we have here is a Raid Max case. Uh, it's quite a nice case. I won't bother showing you all the insides right now because uh, we'll be taking a closer look at it as we go. Um, but it does have a lot of ventilation on it. It's basically got um, a vent on the side. There's no fan on here. But there is, uh, there are screw holes for a fan, so you can mount a fan in there quite easily. I do have a fan. Um, basically, this is going to be a mix of parts that Poshua sent me, parts I've had laying around for a while that I haven't used for anything, and parts that I picked up specifically for this build. So, uh, and then here, of course, we've got another fan on the back. Uh, more, we've got all the uh, you know slots here, expansion slots. 
Uh, power supply actually goes in the bottom on this one, which is kind of interesting. So this, of course, would be the back panel for all the uh, motherboard stuff. And then on the front, I don't think I went over this before, but if we uh, open up the front panel, we actually have uh, got a bunch of drive bays there. I'm really only going to be using the top one here just for my DVD burner for now. Um, but then I've got a USB 2 port and a USB 3 port. Front uh, headphone and mic jacks, of course. Got a reset switch and a power switch. And uh, yeah, so lots of goodies. And then inside we've got a whole bunch of different connectors, which I did a little bit of sort of pre-build prep and just kind of went over the uh, the bits and bobs here. So we'll uh, we'll take a closer look at all that as we go. Just gonna put this on the floor here. Yeah, I should mention I got a lot of shit for my last build for building it on the carpet. The fact that I live in a tropical climate and electrostatic discharge is not really an issue here didn't seem to matter to anybody. They wanted to talk shit about it anyway. So today, I don't have an anti-static mat or anything, but today we're actually going to be building everything right here on the leather uh, ottoman, basically. So this should be fine. I don't know of leather conducting electricity, so I think we'll be okay. So let's just uh, go through the parts here in no particular order. This is the case fan. I actually picked this up a while ago as a replacement for a uh, case fan that had conked out on me. Um, I used it in one of my old computers a while ago um, and then got something else that I used instead. Uh, the reason being, uh, this is supposed to be variable speed, and it is, but it's actually variable speed with a manual switch. It has low, medium, and high settings. If I'm going to use this as a case fan, um, I'm just going to leave it on high. I think I actually used this for my power supply for a while when uh, my power supply had no fan. But then when I did the build on my previous computer, I got a new power supply and basically just swapped the fan out of that and put it into my old one because uh, my old one is way more powerful. So there's that. Now the thing is, I don't know if we'll actually have room for that in the case because this, another thing I bought for my previous build, this is the CPU cooler. It's a Cooler Master fan uh, and heat sink. But as you can see, it's got quite a lot of... Uh, you know, quite, quite a huge grill on there. And as near as I can figure, the way it mounts is actually standing up like this on top of the CPU. So, which means it's going to be sitting like this and I guess blowing it out the back. Uh, which is interesting to me because every CPU cooling fan I've ever seen always comes out the top. But, uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll, we'll play around with it. And this does come with thermal paste. It's actually included with the uh, kit here. So this is, this is a full kit, which is quite nice. So yeah, anyway, we'll give this a shot and see how it goes. And if all else fails, of course, we do have the stock cooler with the CPU. The CPU we'll be using is this bad boy here, the AMD Black uh, Phenom 2 1090T. Uh, it's a six core processor, 3.2 gigahertz per core, overclockable to 3.6. I don't generally overclock stuff because um, I'm a believer in the fact that it uh, tends to reduce the lifespan of your processor. My current processor is a 2.8 gigahertz quad core, the uh, AMD X, X4630, uh, which is a nice processor, but it was essentially, my last build was essentially an emergency build just because I fried my previous computer poking around not knowing what I was doing just stupid mistake on my part um, and uh, well it's been long overdue for an upgrade I mean it was it's it served its purpose fine it was certainly an upgrade from my previous one which was basically just a, uh, a single core but uh, yeah so anyway we're gonna upgrade to a proper six core system this time I know that this is already a little bit outdated but again this is a considerable upgrade from what I am using currently and will definitely give me a lot more processor power than what I have. Um, and then to go with that, in terms of system, uh, the system drive, we actually have a 128 gig or 120 gig uh, SATA 3 SSD drive, which uh, I'm really looking forward to just the, uh, the performance increase that this is going to provide. I mean, first off, it's SATA 3 versus the SATA 2 that I'm currently using. Also, my current system drive is actually a Western Digital Caviar Green, which is a 5400 RPM drive. It is SATA 2, 
and I was upgrading from an IDE drive, so it is quite an upgrade from what I was using, but this is going to be like a quantum leap forward in speed as far as, you know, boot time. And of course, uh, SSD drives, for those who don't know, are usually two and a half inch like this, basically the size of a laptop drive, uh, even ones you put in a desktop, which is why I picked this up today, this is the last piece I needed, you need this, or something like this. This is basically a bracket, which the SSD drive fits in the, in the center here, and then uh, allows you to mount it in a three and a half inch drive bay. So that's gonna be pretty cool. Then what else do we have here? And this is something I actually picked up from NCIX. Uh, we have a two port USB 3.0 uh, card. I actually got this for my quad core system, but uh, now I'm thinking I'm just gonna use it in this one to have another uh, pair of USB 3 card uh, ports. I don't know, maybe. Yeah, well, maybe I'll put this in the quad core and then I can transfer data back and forth more easily. I don't know. Undecided on this, we'll figure it out as we go. I might actually just hang on to this to put into the quad core because I'm still planning to keep the quad core as a like as a capture computer and uh, and also to have as as Rosie's computer whenever she comes by. So I'm going to put her games on it and stuff like that. So um, yeah, so basically I'll be capturing to that while doing all the editing and rendering on this. So, which means having this in the quad core plus the USB 3s in the, in the 6 core uh, will mean I can get a nice, you know, USB 3 external hard drive to transfer files back and forth uh, between the two. Sorry, I'm sweating. It's a little warm in here and I can't really open the windows because there's traffic and shit. So, okay, so what else do we have here? This is basically just a little package of uh, assorted, uh, mostly screws and uh, additional standoffs for the motherboard and whatnot. Uh, this came with the case. I actually pulled this out earlier. I just wanted to see what all was included and what all I still needed to buy. Uh, then we have, uh, to power everything, we've got a brand spanking new 430 watt power supply. Now, my quad core currently has a 700 watt power supply in it. So this is something I'll probably upgrade at some point. Probably not until I get a graphics card though. That's right, I'll tell you right now, don't have a graphics card, just going with onboard video. I'm not building this as a gaming system. If I was building this as a gaming system, obviously I would get a graphics card, but I'm not. I'm basically using it as for editing, rendering, and music. And um, that's pretty much it. So really, the only things that make a difference with that kind of application is uh, memory and um, processor power. So that's gonna be just fine the way it is. Ugh. So then, we obviously need something to plug everything into. We've got this nice motherboard here, which is a Gigabyte, the, eight, the Gigabyte 890GPA-UD3H. It is uh, an AMD 3 board, AMD 3 Plus ready. Basically, all it needs is a uh, BIOS upgrade, and you can run AM, AM3 Plus uh, processors in here, which means I could actually put an 8 core in here, which um, I hope to do at some point. Um, but this has a whole bunch of uh, cool stuff on it. It does have FireWire. I wasn't actually sure about that. It has FireWire headers, so you can add additional FireWire ports if you want, but it does also have a FireWire port built in. So I've actually, I was going to transfer my FireWire card over from the old computer, but I'm actually going to leave it in that and then use the FireWire connector here. So that way I have FireWire on both. Firewire, some of you may be scratching your heads thinking in this day and age of USB 3 and eSATA, why would you still be using Firewire? Simple, because I still use my digital 8 camcorder for capturing purposes quite often. And um, it uses a Firewire interface and it's perfect for capturing standard definition DV uh, video. Then we have a three terabyte hard drive. Got a whole bunch of hard drives that we're actually transferring over from the old system. So we got a three terabyte hard drive. We do have a couple of IDE drives that we're going to throw in there just because they've got some stuff on them and I do have the drive base for them. These are strictly for storage. I know they're not fast and I am particularly high capacity. These will eventually be retired. I'm using these strictly for storage. So I don't really care so much about the speed. Uh, it's more just for the space. So we just got a Maxtor uh, 200 gig hard drive here. Maxtor is a company you don't even see around anymore. So. And then uh, this is probably my fastest hard drive right here next to the SSD. We got a Seagate Barracuda 
200 gig. Um, this is actually a three and a half inch drive and a five and a half inch bay. Uh, this is a bay adapter. I probably won't need this uh, for this configuration. We'll we'll see how it goes. Um, so yeah, so this is basically another 200 gigs of IDE power. Then of course we have the LightScribe drive. I actually transferred over my old IDE, yeah, back to IDE again, uh, my old IDE uh, DVD burner to the uh, quad core because I was going to pick up another LightScribe drive. I was just popped, up, popped into Future Shop today and apparently all the drives they have there are not LightScribe, even though they sell the blanks. Go figure. So we're going to be going with this one um, because it's done the job quite nicely. And then finally, one second here. Uh, finally, we have a couple of external drives that we're going to turn into internal drives. So we have an iPro 2 terabyte. Um, all of these drives basically have home movie and video letter footage that I, I, uh, I've been capturing and archiving and organizing and also using for Multimedia Chronicles retro episodes. And then we also have a Western Digital Elements um, 3 terabyte drive. So both of these are just standard SATA drives inside that plug into a custom controller. Um, but I'm pretty sure the connectors are just standard SATA connectors. At least I know they are. Excuse me, I know it is in the elements. I have not opened up an iPro before, so we'll see how it goes. One big thing that's changed since uh, since the last build I did, I was kind of learning on my feet back then, was uh, I worked for Geek Squad for a year, and I've been working for Connect Pro for the past, I don't know, six months or so, and I am now... A plus certified. That's right. I am a fully A plus certified computer technician. So, yeah, this build should go a little bit more smoothly. Plus, I'm putting modern components into a modern case, unlike last time when I was putting modern components into an ancient case. So, I imagine things are going to go a little more smoothly this time. And then, of course, for all these wonderful SATA drives, we have a whole bunch of SATA connectors. Do I even have enough SATA connectors? How many SATA drives do I have here? One, two, three, four. I got four. And I have four. Perfect. I have just enough. <laughs> I didn't actually check that before. All right. So I think we're ready to rock and roll. Um, let's call this the end of part one. And I'll see you guys in part two. And we're actually going to take all of this and put it into this. See you next time, guys. It's okay, it was only the CPU, nothing important. <laughs> Fuck, that would... Yeah, we'll just pretend that didn't happen.